All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I let to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Shem Shai, which are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of the Son, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, who is the so called black man. I want to say peace and blessings to all the sincere Akim out there that's pushing the truth and sincerity. All right, and this video is going to be about uh, the beef between the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. Which the northern kingdom will be you will be you so-called Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians, and the southern kingdom will be so-called African Americans, so-called West so-called West Indians, and also you uh Haitians. All right. Which a lot of people would disagree with that. You got people in Israel. People who call themselves Israelites um, that don't believe that the Latinos are Israelites, and you have Latinos now, which 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 that's a new thing. You know that's been on the scene for like a few years now. Now you got these Latino only camps. They think that the Southern Kingdom are Canaanites. So, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> So you got, so you so so you got the Hispanics that know that they're Israelites, so-called Hispanics. They think that all twelve tribes are Hispanics, and then on the contrary, you have the Southern Kingdom. Uh, you got these Judites, the Negroes. They think that all twelve tribes are just black as shit, right? Which all of that just stems from the beef that we done had with each other from long ago that's that's just where all that stems from and this is how you know that we are the true israelites because we're beefing with each other even until this day this is how you know that we're the true israelites man all right so i'm going to get into a few scriptures because this is nothing new this isn't con uh, th this is not new we always had beef going back to the scriptures. All right. And once Yahweh Shai returns, that beef is going to be that, that beef is going to be squashed. We're no longer going to be two separate nations anymore. All right. And the and the main reasons people have for Latinos not being it was like it's because they're racist. Well, listen. I grew up around Judah, all right, and I tell you, Judah is some Judah, Judah. Judah is racist as hell, man. Especially when it comes on to the other tribes, all right. Judah will Judah will make fun of you for being dark skinned They will call you black as shit, all right. Judah will J J Judah will tell you to go back to your own country. Judah will talk bad about the foreigners. Are you foreigners? You foreigners? This you foreigners? That. Judah, Judah is pretty. It's pretty damn racist. Period. I grew. I grew up around Judah, and there are some race, and there's and they're, and they're one racist tribe. But then when any other tribe, when when any other tribe uh, matches that same energy, they turn around and try to call them racist. But Judah restarted it. Judah started it. And that's in the scriptures as well. Judah actually started this whole beef when it comes on to the beef with the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So let me start rambling on and I'm going to get into the scriptures. All right, this is 1 Kings 12 and 14. And I'm going to get into the uh, to the split, which you can read about the prophecy of the split in the previous chapter, 1 Kings the 11th chapter, which y'all can read that for yourselves. All right, I pointed, I pointed it to y'all so y'all can go ahead and read 1 Kings 11 for yourself. It's 1 Kings 12 and 14. <clears throat> it says, And speak to them after the counsel of the young men. Now, just to give you a backstory, because I'm trying to get to the point, you know, because, you know, Israel got real low uh, um, attention spans. So I just want to get, get the main points. When you read this, uh, you had King Solomon's son, Rehoboam, he went to Shechem to be a uh, crowned king over all of Israel. All right, so this is talking about Rehoboam right here. 
It says, and speak to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, my father made your yoke heavy. Now, who is Rehoboam's father? Solomon. But Solomon is from the tribe of Judah. It says, my father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So you see that? So Judah was the tribe who started all of this, all of this beef, the war between the southern kingdom and also the northern kingdom. That's why the northern kingdom went off and 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 separated because of this right here. Because the northern kingdom, which was known as just Israel at the time, they wanted the yoke to be light. But you see what Rehoboam said? It says, I speak to them after the council of the young men saying, my father made your yoke heavy and I will add to your yoke. So look, I'm going to even be worse than my father. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people for the cause was from Yahweh that he might perform his saying, which Yahweh spake by Ahijah, the Sh the uh, Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. All right, so now you have here the kingdom divided, Jeroboam rules Israel. Verse 16. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, now when it says all Israel, it's talking about uh northern kingdom. It says the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to go. Shalakia. Therefore, King Rebel made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David until this day. And you see that today. You know, you have some, uh, you have some, you have some, you have some northern kingdom brothers. They don't really bang with Judah. The southern kingdom period. But I always say, you know, my first, uh, my first, my first close friend in high school. He was an Ephraimite, Puerto Rican. So you will have some northern kingdom that don't mess with on the southern kingdom and vice versa. But like I said, that just all stems from the beef that we had from history. It says, and it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin. So you see Benjamin's in here. So that's where you get the southern kingdom. You got Judah, Benjamin, Levi, which I'm going to get into Levi later. This is 104 score thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring again the kingdom to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. So you see that? So here you have. The northern kingdom and southern kingdom about to go to war. But you have guys in Israel that would say, oh, northern kingdom can't be uh, the same people as us. You know, you know, they're racist. They hate us. You know, they want to fight us. This, that, and the third. But here it goes right here in the scriptures. Brothers fighting against each other. Then that's what brothers do. Brothers always fight against each other. Sisters always fight against each other. When is there ever peace? They always they always go to war with each other. That's nothing new. So they gotta so you you guys that think on the contrary, you gotta get out of that mindset. And this is clear in the scriptures that we went to war with each other, and we will continue to go to war with each other until Yahweh Shah comes. And I'm gonna get that prophecy later. All right. So now let me go ahead and get second chronicles, the 13th chapter. And let's see here. I'm gonna start at verse three. Matter of fact, I'm gonna start at verse two. 
If I'm just start from verse one. It says, now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam began Abijah or Abijah to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. And who was Abijah or Abijah king over Judah? And Jeroboam was king over northern kingdom. And Abijah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war, even 400,000 chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him with 800,000 chosen men, being a mighty men of valor. So you see? So you see that right there? Southern kingdom and northern kingdom having beef, going to war with each other. And like I said earlier, and it all started with the house of Judah. But ultimately, it was the will of the Heavenly Father. But verse 4 says, And Abijah stood up, stood up upon Mount Zamaram, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam, all Israel. Are ye not to know that Yahweh God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever? Even to him and to his sons by covenant of salt. Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, is risen up and hath rebelled against his Lord. And you know what's so crazy? It says Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, he was a servant of Solomon. So, hey man, Solomon probably wasn't hearkening to the law in um Exodus or in um Leviticus about not ruling over. You know your brother with rigor which that's in leviticus the 25th chapter because it said that solomon had made their yoke a uh, heavy so solomon probably had northern kingdom servants and he wasn't treating them right and like i can see it i can see it man because man when 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 the, when the when the uh tribe of judah is in charge oh my goodness dude do the tribe of judah take their position of power to the next level that's jake for you jake gets a position of power and bro they think that they esau most times they act worse than esau when jake gets a position of power so like so like from just reading this i can actually picture this in my mind i can picture king solomon having some type of uh or or being some type of oppressor oppressor towards the um towards the uh northern kingdom and you even see it with some brothers in the truth only thing that come out only thing that come out of their mouth is judah 24 7. judah 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 you know what i'm saying still yet oppressing the other tribes anyway verse seven it says let's see here I'm going to jump down to verse uh, 9. It says, Have ye not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites, and have made you priests after the manner of the nations of other lands, so that whosoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no God. So you see that? So <clears throat> letting you know that Jeroboam, what Jeroboam was doing Jeroboam made a, a golden calf, right? And he also ordained a priesthood. And he casted out the Levites. So what do you think the Levites came to? The Levites came to the house of Judah. So hence, that's where you have Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They're the southern kingdom. Then you have Ephraim, Issachar, Manasseh, so on and so forth. They're the northern kingdom. Because Jeroboam, like I said... Jeroboam is the king of who? The northern kingdom. Northern kingdom king. Ephraimite, right? He casted out the Levitical priests and he had set up another uh, tribe as the priest. Now, I heard that tribe was the tribe of Gad, but I'm not too sure. That's what I've heard. I, I, I didn't, I never, I never uh, came across that scripture. But I heard brothers say, that uh that the tribe of gad had became the priests for the northern kingdom 
but I'm not too sure on that. So this is where you have Judah, Benjamin, Levi for Southern Kingdom, and then you have the rest of the tribes like Ephraim, Zebulon, Naphtali, Gad, Reuben, Simeon, Zebulon, Issachar, all right, as Northern Kingdom. So hope you all understand that part. That's the history right there. So that's the history of the split. Now you read now you like I said earlier, you can read about the prophecy of the split in first Kings the 11th chapter. You can read the whole chapter. You can read the whole entire chapter. It goes into Solomon. Um Solomon going off by idolatry, you know, his death, and then uh Rehoboam coming up coming up in his stead, and then a prophet prophesying into Jeroboam about the kingdom being rent or or uh, the kingdom being split apart all right so now um we'll go ahead to isaiah seventh chapter and this is just body bags bro this is just heavy hitters so i don't want to hear no more people saying how the mexicans they're racist towards the blacks and so on and so forth you know they don't act nothing like because this down the third which that's a lie Especially when it comes on to uh, Puerto Ricans. Now, now I live in Philly. Philly is filled with nothing but Puerto Ricans. And I tell you, <laughs> them guys, hey, man, Puerto Ricans are, are nothing but light-skinned light -skinned Judites. They're nothing but light-skinned Judites. Oh, I lived in Texas. I went to this one mall in Texas, and... You see, it's a clear difference. You see how these heathens, like Esau and them, when they try to mimic Jake, they try their hardest. Like, they try extra hard. But Issachar and Ephraim, it just comes natural to them. Why? Because they are Israelites. All right? And then, like I said, when I was in high school, I never felt any type of way with a Puerto Rican saying nigga. They could say nigga all they want, but when it came on the Esau saying niggas, like, oh, 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 Esau about to get punched on. But when it came on to Ephraim saying nigga, like, all right, cool, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Because they're niggas too. And I still talk to the brother Justin. Oh, I said his name. Well, yeah, that's his name. The brother uh, who, I, who, who I had went to high school with. His name was Justin. And he's cool. You know? He would call me nigga. I will call him Spick. <laughs> and cool, he, he, he was he, he he was a cool he was a cool brother. Why? Because they're Israelites. Period. Point blank. And then what killed me also is a lot of guys' arguments is saying how the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans they have stores and this and a third. Well, guess what? Don't don't the so-called Jamaicans. I, bro, any, anywhere I go, anywhere I go in Philly, you will see a Jamaican store. You got you got Benjamin stores everywhere. You got Haitian stores everywhere. So that in itself, you're defeating your own argument. So by your own logic, that means that uh, uh, Jamaicans aren't Israelites. That means that Haitians aren't Israelites, according to you. Because they have a few stores. Benjamin got stores for days too. Levi got stores for days too. So you're telling me that they aren't Israelites? Judah. Ju Judah, uh, Judah has stores. Around the corner from my house, you have a Judite, uh, Judite um, soul food spot. Judah also have their own hair, uh, their own hair salons as well. So what now? Also, you have a, a Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom slave rebellions. Like you had the, the tribe of Reuben, which are the Seminole Indians. Yes, you Seminole Indians, you are a part of this too. You, you are from the tribe of Reuben. The Seminole Indians and the African-Americans, so-called you Judites, y'all had a slave rebellion together. All right. And it was documented. It was documented that 
that the tribe of Reuben, the Seminole Indians, looked at the so-called Negroes as brothers and sisters. Why is that? Because that's what they are. They are brothers and sisters. Reuben is the big brother, the firstborn. Isaiah 7 and 1. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, uh, uh, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. So here, yo, this is crazy. So here you have it. The northern kingdom teamed up with a heathen nation to go to war against Jerusalem, the southern kingdom. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved in the heart of his people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and share Jashab, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fullest field. And say unto, the, unto him, Take heed and be quiet. Fear not. You need to be faint-hearted. For the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria and of the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let's go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us. And set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabil. Thus said the Lord power, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. All right, so you see that? So another instance where Israel and um, Judah going to war with each other. So this isn't anything new. There's nothing new under the sun. Right? You know the kingdom, you so-called Hispanics. You are indeed Israelites. And you are the same people. You and the so-called Negroes, you guys are the same people. And I also want to make another point because uh, people wouldn't de people wouldn't deny the fact that that Benjamin, you so-called Jamaicans, you Trinidadians, they wouldn't deny the fact that they're Israelites, right? Okay, so these people say that the Northern Kingdom. The Hispanics are not Israelites because they're racist. Well, guess what? I grew up Benjamin. Okay, my mom's side is Benjamin. And I tell you, my family, my mom's side of the family talked a lot of smack about Judah. Trust me. Especially my grandma. My grandma calls the Judites <laughs> black Americans, number one. How they're lazy, how they're unruly different things like that my grandma talked a lot of smack about uh judah but you wouldn't say that she's not an israelite so i'm just showing the hypocrisy here but it's just prophecy man it's just prophecy that the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom wouldn't uh get along so it's cool it's isaiah 8 and verse 21 and they shall and they shall pass through it hardly be stead and hungry and that shall come to pass hold on so lot small preacher hold on so lot let me get the right preacher right quick Isaiah 9 and 21 that's what it is all right boom Isaiah 9 and 21 it's just Manasseh Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh and they together shall be against Judah for all this his anger is not turned away but his hand is still stretched out okay another precept proving that Ephraim will be against Judah so now the next argument right next argument is that the Native Americans had the so-called African Americans as slaves. Okay, cool. Let's just say that that happened, which number one, 
it was all by design of the so-called white man. The so-called white man has set up that, has set that division up. Okay. That's what it was when you actually go into the history, but people don't study their history. Secondly, you had you had you had Negroes enslaving their own people over here in America. Number three, you had Haitians putting Dominicans in slavery too. Point number four, and you can look all those up. Point number four that happened in the that happened in the scriptures. This is the book of Second Chronicles. And notice that I'm going to history here, a lot of history. Meaning letting you know what that you guys need to read, you guys need to read your history. So this is Second Chronicles 28 and 5. It says, Wherefore the Lord his power delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria. So this is uh, uh silver backing off of uh Isaiah the seventh chapter, and they smote him and carried away a great multitude of them captives and brought them to Damascus. And he also was delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, slew in Judah a hundred and twenty thousand in one day, which were all valiant men, because they have forsaken Yahweh, Yahweh, God of their fathers. And Zikri, a mighty man of Ephraim, slew Messiah, the king's son. And as as will come, the governor of the house and Elkanah that was next to the king and the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren, 200,000 women, sons and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Jerusalem. So you see that? So here we have it, our people enslaving our own people in the scriptures. This is uh, Amos. Amos 2, is it? Let me see here. Amos 2. Yep, this is Amos 2 and verse 6. It says, Thus save the Lord. For three transgressions of Israel, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they sold the righteous for silver, and the poor for a pair of shoes. So this this scripture lets you know that we sold the righteous, which who's the righteous? Our own people, for silver, for money, and the poor for a pair of shoes. This is all in the scriptures, bro. So question is. When is all this going to stop? When is the Lord going to put an end to this? When the prophecies come to pass. This is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. Let's see. Where well, I'm going to start. I'm going to yeah, start verse 11. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt via Assyria, which... Uh, who went into slavery into Syria, the northern kingdom? So to let you know that we, we still have remnants, we still have remnants of the northern kingdom over there in Assyria, and from Egypt, a lot of so-called uh, Judites, you so-called Af you so-called African Americans, you so-called uh, which you wouldn't be called African Americans, right? You would be classified as an Egyptian over there in Egypt. Uh, also, uh, Levi, Benjamin, right? Because you read in the book of Second Maccabees, you had Israelites. You had Israelites over there in Egypt. And we were actually writing a letter. The, the Israelites that stayed, the Israelites that stayed in Israel, they were writing a letter to, uh, to our brothers that were in Egypt. And you had synagogues in Egypt, you see. So yeah, so you had our, so so you, so you got our people that's over there in Egypt as well. You know. 
Now, fella, let me go ahead and prove that real fast. This is um Second Maccabees chapter one. Second Maccabees one and one. It says the brethren, the Jews that be at Jerusalem and in the land of Judea, wish unto the brethren, the Jews that are throughout Egypt, health and peace. So you see that? The Jews that are throughout Egypt. So you got Israelites that are still over there in Egypt. Right? And it says, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So this is all end time connotation. So these prophecies have to come to pass until then. Unless you're in the truth, you know, there's going to be conflicts between the southern and northern kingdom. Which, like I said, I always been with northern kingdom. Never had an issue with them. One of my, my first closest friends in high school was the Ephraimite. Right? This is Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 21. It says, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. So notice how it says the children of Israel. Because you have guys that say, see, only only Judah, only Judah was dispersed to the four corners of the earth. Well, it says the children of Israel from among the heathen. So you have Israelites everywhere. Verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So you see? So that's why we don't look at each other as the same people. Because the Lord put a division between us. This is it says no, it says no more we're gonna be two separate nations. We're not going to be looking at each other as, oh, they're the, uh, you know, they're the uh, Negro and they're the uh, Hispanics. All that is coming to an end. It's coming to an end right now. That's why you have brothers in, in, in the camps. You got uh, Ephraim, like in, uh, like in my camp, for instance, we got two Ephraimites and you have one Gadite. Well, well, really, I think his other brother is Gad, but he, but he swears that he's Judah, but I think he's Gad. Understand? And really, and really, a lot of you guys that claim to be Judah, you're either from Gad or Reuben. A lot of you guys that professes to be Judah, because you had a lot of um, Reubenites, you had a lot of Reubenites and a lot of Gadites mixing among uh, Judah. And and Jake always told me how they got Indian in their family. So so them guys are probably Gadites, man. Gadites and Reubenites as well. All right, but you know that's it on that. You know, I just wanted to get in, just wanted to touch on that on the history. Uh Lord willing, a few brothers and few sisters were edified. Shalom.